nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Pastor and founder of Power and Deliverance Worldwide Ministry. Thank you for joining our broadcast. We are going to have a wonderful, wonderful time with the Word of the Lord on today. I am excited. I need you to get excited about the Word of God. I need you to get excited about your life because after today, your life will never be the same. God has given you a day today that you will never see again. And so you ought to get excited about every day that God gives you above ground. And so we thank God today, and we're going to enjoy the words of the Lord. I want to invite your attention to Acts chapter number 27, verse number 18 through verse 25. And we're going to read our printed text and see what the Lord will say to our hearts. Are you there? Right? And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship, and the third day we cast out with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest laid on us, we all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that shall sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe, God, that it shall be even as it was told me. All right. We want to focus on verse number 22, where the scripture says, there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. And I want to use for a thought for just a few minutes. Don't quit because of the storm. The introduction in the background ground to our lesson or our scripture tells us that the apostle Paul was already in trouble before the shipwreck uh, because he was being transported to Rome to stand trial before the emperor. So not only was he in trouble in that respect, but now he is shipwrecked on the ocean and they are scrambling for their lives. And so the storm uh, that they encountered put their lives or put his life in danger as well as those around him. Sometimes we have to be careful about what we do and the things that we say and the uh, 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 things that we, we find ourselves involved in because it can endanger those around us also. So this is what had happened. They all were in mortal danger because of the storm, but not because of the apostle, uh, but because they refused to listen to the apostle uh, when he warned the captain 
that it was not safe for them to travel, but they should wait until the storm had passed until uh, uh, it was over to continue their journey. So no one would listen to Paul. And the reason was because he was a prisoner. Uh, and, and so they decided to continue the journey. Isn't that just like life? Uh, before you can uh, put one problem to rest, uh, here comes another one. And uh, uh, I can testify uh, to that fact. Uh, the engine on my uh, tr pickup truck went out at 300,000 miles, and I had to get a new engine on put into it. So it's in the shop uh, getting the engine fixed, and lo and behold, uh, my other car, uh, it don't want to go into park. So, and not only that, my son's car is in the shop uh, getting it fixed also. So I know what it's like to be bombarded amen, by a series of challenges, and before you can put one down, two more arise, right? And so uh, I want to uh, let you understand that uh, uh, we must not give up in the face of our storms. Uh, we must not quit uh, because we are faced with a storm. Now, um, can anyone identify with dealing with multiple calamities at the same, same time? <laughs> Wow, when it rains, it pours. As it, as it is in my life, so it was with the Apostle Paul. Just because we are a child of God, let us not think or dream that because uh, we are a child of God, that that means we will not have trouble. Glory be to God. The question we must answer today is not whether we will have storms or whether storms will come, but when will they come? Glory be to God. Because they're coming, and not only when will they come, but how will you respond when they do come? We must not faint in the day of our adversity. The Bible said, if you faint in the day of adversity, then thy strength is small. We cannot quit because of the way that the wind blows in our life. I submit to you that it's not the blowing of the wind uh, but it, that determines our destiny, but it's the set of the sail. And let me talk about that for, for just a moment. Uh, you, you have to set the sail uh, before you embark, uh, and therefore your sail should be set and aimed for your destiny. If you made uh, a decision to make heaven your home, then your sail should have been set at the time you commenced or started the journey. And so if you uh, have your set sail, your sail set for the right uh, destiny, it doesn't matter how the wind blows, the sail is what guides the ship. And so therefore, no matter what kind of storm, what comes hell or high water, I, my soul has been anchored in the Lord and my sights have been set on heaven, and I will not stop until I reach my destination. You see, my sail for heaven was set a long time ago so that the blowing of the wind will only propel me uh, toward my destiny. Glory be to God. So I don't, I don't worry about whether I've got a headwind, a tailwind, a crosswind, or no wind. My sail remains set for the same destination. Glory be to God. And so when the apostle uh, Paul and them left Crete, uh, headed for Rome, their sail was set and the winds began to blow and the tempest began to beat against them uh, and the waves began to toss them to and fro. Uh, but the sail was still set for their destination. Now, I want you to understand that this was not an ordinary kind of storm. Uh, this was a typhoon type of storm, a, uh, as they call it, a nor'easter, which was a kind of wind that comes out of the northeast. And this storm was violent. Uh, uh, this storm even punished the waves 
against themselves. This is the kind of storm, if you will, where God will turn you upside down and shake you to everything falls out of your pocket. And you're trying to hold on to what's in your pocket and God is shaking you and your blood's rushing to your head and you're semi-comatose and you're still trying to maintain consciousness. But the shaking is so hard that you lose sight of where you are. And before you know it, you've fallen into a deep sleep. And when you wake up and the storm is over and you find out that you've been drained of and emptied of everything on the inside of you and you have to start from there. That's the kind of storm that this was. But, you know, the Apostle Paul never lost faith. He never gave up, nor did he quit uh, or give up hope as to where he would end up. And so then uh we must understand that we can't wait until we get into the storm to try to figure out how we're going to react or which way to set the sail. So as a result, we must know before we strike out. And we'll talk about this a little bit more as soon as we come back from our break. God bless you. And we are back. Thank you for remaining with us. Uh, we're going to pick up uh, where we left off. We were talking about this tempestuous storm that the Apostle Paul and those who were extraditing him to Rome encountered uh, on their journey. Uh, we have to understand that the storms uh, that we encounter in our life are training grounds. They are testings. And so therefore, uh, it is a place where you can try the spirit and see if it be true. And so as a result, uh, they were being tested by this storm. Your storms come in your life not to destroy you, but to make you stronger. It's the place to ask yourself, when will he come? And the answer is given by the songwriter Every time I need him, he keeps making a way. Glory be to God. And so then uh, clap your hands and give God some glory. Give God some praise and shout amen and thank God, amen, that every time you need him, he will show up no matter what the storm might be because you have to understand He's the one that can calm the, the raging sea. He's the one that can quell the storm. And that's why the Apostle Paul say without equivocation, be of good cheer. In verse 22, he says, there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but the ship. Therefore, I don't quit. Don't panic. Don't give up. Don't faint. Because he that shall come will come and will not tarry, and his reward is with him. What you have to understand is that there is a lesson in every storm, and you must learn the lesson that is being taught by the storm that are going on in your life. 
Whatever you're going through right now, there's a lesson in what you are going through. And you must pay attention and acknowledge what God is trying to say to you by virtue of what you are going through. But by no means are you to quit or to give up because of the storm that uh, that's raging in your life. The songwriter said, though the storms keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day, yet the hope that lies within me is reassuring because my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Even though the ship was being tossed to and fro, amen, the apostle Paul's soul had been anchored in the Lord. He had already made a resolve in his mind that no matter what comes my way, I'm going to give God the praise. I'm going to give God the glory. I don't care how many pandemics I have to go through. I'm still still going to keep my focus on the Lord. I don't care how long I have to wear a mask. I'm going to keep my focus on the Lord. No matter what I go through, what I step into, how God shakes me, how God texts me. Oh man, glory be to God. My soul has already been anchored. And listen, I got the anchor, the kind of anchor that doesn't just lay upon the surface, but my anchor, amen, is hooked into the ground. And listen, I'm not going to drift, but so far before the anchor, amen, will take effect and pull me, amen, back into tolerance. And I'm so glad. Aren't you glad today that your soul has been anchored in the Lord? Aren't you glad today that you made a decision a long time ago for Christ I'll live and for Christ I'll die, amen, Listen, I'd rather live, but to die is gain. Glory be to God. I, the only reason I, Paul said he would rather live is because for our sake. But he's recognized that to be with the Lord was far more exceedingly joyous for him than to be here on this earth. But he realized the need and the call and the vision and the mission that God had given him on this earth. So he didn't fight with it. Glory be to God. But he made the best that he could out of it. And so therefore, we have to do the very same. Your praise for God should not have diminished one bit since we've been in this situation way back in March. You should still have, in fact, your praise right now should be stronger now than it was then as much as you see the day approaching. You ought to be more joyous now that God has kept you. Glory be to God didn't have to keep you this long in the storm, but God, amen, has kept us, amen, through danger seen and unseen, and he has given us the assurance that no man's life is going to be taken, amen, because of the storm that we are facing. And that's why I am never going to quit. I'm never going to stop. I'm going to keep on giving God the glory. Oh, I love the song we used to sing, rise and shine and give God the glory. Soldiers of the cross. We are soldiers of the cross and soldiers should never, amen, surrender of their own free will. And listen, every military, every U.S. soldier has to take an oath that he will never surrender by his own free will. Glory be to God. And listen, that, if, listen, if we had that resolve against the enemy, we wouldn't have to worry about backsliding. We wouldn't have to worry about people backsliding in the church. If they had a resolve, glory be to God, that, that I will never surrender of my own free will. Glory be to God. Uh, it's one thing for you to jump off the cliff, but it's quite another for somebody to push you. Glory be to God. I'm not jumping on my own free will. You don't have to push me, but you're going to have to throw me because there's going to be a tussle. Glory be to God. And so I just thank God for the storms that come in my life. Because those are the places, those are the time, those are the instances, they are when I learn, that's when I get my training, is when I go through the storm. Because when I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed 
and I have a testimony. See, until you get a testimony that the Lord has been good, you really have not been established. You have to have a testimony. When those men came out of that storm, they had a testimony. Now, this, this wasn't typical of any type of hurricane or tornado or anything that we experience. This storm lasted 14 days. Can you imagine being tossed at sea for 14 days until finally your vessel breaks apart? Now, this I know we, we read in the Bible, they call this a ship, but this didn't have no hull down below where you could go and get away from the elements. <laughs> this wasn't that kind of ship. This wasn't a Disney cruise ship. This, this, this was a different kind of ship. And so <laughs> this was the kind of ship that they, the waves were higher and taller than the ship. And they beat against the ship. And when every time they beat against the ship, the water would drench those that were above uh, uh, on deck on the ship. And so I know about those waves because I happen to have been caught in uh, the ocean uh, during a hurricane. And the waves were, were 22 feet. And, and they beat against the side of the ship. Now, this ship that we were on weighed 90 tons. And so as a result, it was a pretty big vessel. And so, uh, but God tossed it around like it was a pencil in the ocean. Glory be to God. <laughs> and, and, and you could be walking down the hall and, and a wave would hit up against the, the ship and the ship would lean that way and then everybody would lean that way. And then another way would hit it and knock it back this way. And then everybody would walk this way. And so as a result, uh, I know what it is to be tossed and driven on the reckless sea of life. Glory be to God. Somber skies and howling winds all succeed a bright sunshine. But when the mist had rolled away, glory be to God, we'll understand it better by and by. So we thank God for our tests and our strong. I don't know who God is speaking to uh, and ministering to today, but God is ministering to you that your learning come from your storms. Your tests and your training comes out of your storms. So therefore, don't despise what God is trying to teach you, because when you come through whatever it is you're going through now, you're going to be a lot stronger. Because here's the thing, all of, all of us have something that we, uh, as Job said, uh, the thing that I dread the most is come upon me. We all have some things that we have to face that we don't want to face, but that's the thing that the enemy always bring our way. So we have to deal with that. So we'll talk about this a little bit more as we go to our break. Stay with us. Don't move. It's getting interesting. God bless you. Sometimes it's moments of brokenness which create the greatest transformations. Times where fear gives birth to faith, pain leads to healing, and chaos dissolves into peace. It's in these times we often see God more clearly. For in our deepest turmoil, He remains faithful. When our spirit is crushed, He remains strong. When our moment is too heavy, He carries the burden. As gold is refined by fire, we too are often refined by struggle. It's part of growing, changing, becoming. Lately, the journey has been difficult. Our breath has been labored. Our steps uneasy, but we stand in faith, knowing who is leading us through this desert, the God of peace, the God of hope, the God of restoration. And we're back. We're headed down the homeward stretch now. 
And we're going to pick up right where we left off. We were talking about uh, the lessons that can be learned from the storms that we experience in our lives. Uh, only if your soul has been anchored in the Lord. See, the Apostle Paul was not worried about his life because his anchor was down. And he knew uh, that no matter what, uh, he would be in the bosom of the Lord God. Uh, and so as a result, uh, he was not worried. And, you know, you won't be worried either when you have made your peace with God and you know that you know that you know where your destiny is going to be. All right. So I want to pick up. I want to go to verse number 21 of our text right now where the Apostle Paul was speaking to uh, those whom or the captain uh, that he was sailing with. And, and notice how he salutes him when he said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. So what Paul is saying to them is that the situation that they found themselves in was because they refused to listen. How many of us in the natural uh, have failed to listen to our parents? Uh, failed to, some of us failed to listen to our pastor uh, telling us the same thing over and over again, and, and we still don't listen. Uh, I, I had a friend who, who had an uncle that told him uh, when he went into the ministry, uh, he said to him, son, don't kill yourself. They ain't listening. Uh, well, because we preach with such repetition, uh, it's apparent that somebody may not be listening because we see the same thing happening over and over and over again. But so what I want you to understand is that Paul and them uh, found themselves in this situation simply because they would not listen to the apostle Paul. They would not listen to uh, Paul uh, who had wisdom. And so what we have to understand is that we cannot uh, dispel wisdom because of titles and predicaments. Because sometimes uh, God can, can use even the least of us to espouse the greatest wisdom that we have ever witnessed. And so therefore we cannot uh, dispel or dismiss people because of their status or because of their station in life. You better be attention or attentive to the spirit of God. You better be attentive to what God is saying and what God is doing. And, and regardless of what medium God sends the message to you, you better hear the voice of God. If they had listened to the apostle Paul, glory be to God, they would not have found themselves in this situation. And the apostle Paul, he rebuked them. He reminded them that you should have listened. Oh, glory. Uh, that's a whole nother message. How many of us have gotten ourselves into hot water and then realized, you know, I, I wish I'd have listened. You know, I, I used to get in that kind of situation a lot with my wife until I learned some sense. Now I listen, I pay attention. And, and you know what? I absorb myself of a lot of storms simply because I listen. You must learn to listen. God gave you two ears and one mouth so that he wants you to listen more than you talk. So as a result, uh, I begin to listen. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God has given some instructions. Someone, God has sent someone your way and have given you some advice and I, I don't know, but you may be finding it difficult to take that advice. Well, this lesson today is telling you that you ought to reconsider your thought processes regarding what is going on. Uh, they were distracted by Paul's title. His title was prisoner. And they thought that Paul, because of the situation and the trouble that you're in, you're in no position to give any advice or any instruction whatsoever. You already in trouble. Uh, why should we take your advice? Then we'll be in trouble just like you. But they didn't know that trouble with God don't last always. 
Glory be to They did not know, amen, that even though, amen, that Paul was being extradited to Rome, that God had not left him, that God was still, amen, his guide, his compass, and his barometer, and his weather reporter. Glory be to God. And so they did fail to listen, and they paid the price. The ship was totally destroyed, demolished, and God backed them into a cove and gave them little pieces of the ship, and they rode those pieces of the ship until they got to shore. And, and when they became ashore, God had someone waiting to receive them, and, oh, glory be to God, uh, help them still, because uh, the, the, as they, uh, they, they got chilly because of the water, they had gotten wet, and they built a fire, uh, I don't know, where they got uh, matches or anything like that. But the Bible said they built a fire to warm themselves. And as the apostle Paul was warming his hand over the fire, a viper jumped out of the fire and latched on to his hand. And Paul, amen, didn't go running through uh, down the aisle and shaking his hand and screaming and hollering. But the Bible said he shook it off. Ah, oh, glory. Ah, oh, that's a whole nother mentality right there that whatever storm come your way, you're going to have to shake it off and pack it under your feet. You can't panic and start running wild like you don't have any sense, but you've got to remain composed because you know that God is in control and no man can take your life or snatch you out of his hand unless God allows it. And even so, amen, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. And so therefore, uh, you have to understand that. Glory be to God. The wisdom that Paul had, they could not grasp uh, his word until the storm came. I know it's not written, but I know, amen, by reason of humanity, that when this storm was over, somebody wished they had listened. That's the same thing today. When this message is over, somebody may have to wish that they had listened to what I said to them on today. If you have not in the right relationship with God, you need to make a decision right now to put down your anchor and set your sail for heaven so that no matter what you encounter in the coming days, that you will be assured that heaven will be your final destination, your final resting place. And therefore, that's why God is sending this message of warning that somebody must learn how to listen and make the appropriate decision before it's too late. Glory be to God. We must understand that until the storm came, we must learn to say, who am I, amen, connecting with today that I shouldn't, amen, need to understand that I need to be connected with God. And until I connect with him, I have not, amen, set my sail, amen, glory be to God. We must realize that there's going to be a change in our lives and you need to make a change on today, make a decision for God, glory be to God, because today I'm going to give you some specific instruction because there may be someone today that's going through a storm that you don't know how you're going to get out of that storm, but I'm going to invite you to connect with this ministry and we will get into that storm with you, amen, and walk with you and hold your hand and help, amen, lead you out of, amen, that storm until God, amen, and uh, blesses you and fills you with his precious spirit so that your destiny can be assured and your anchor can be assured. And that's why it's so important for us to listen, glory be to God, to those that God has sent our way. If you are not Amen. In the right relationship with God today, if you have not been saved, you have not been washed in the blood, by that we mean baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, I need you to go to pdtministries.org and click on con contact us 
and leave us a message. We will get back to you and we will lead you, amen, through that storm and God will restore you to dry land. Well, I'm about out of time now, but I thank you for joining me and I pray that something has been said that will encourage, inspire, and motivate you to continue to live for the Lord. I'll see you on Wednesday the next time for a midweek Bible study. Until then, shalom.